If you're ready to finish your divorce so that you can move on, mediation is a great opportunity to do that. Hi, I'm Max Ruthenberg Marshall, founder of Porchlight. Today, we're gonna to be talking about seven divorce mediation tips for couples who are ready to move on. Now, when you go to mediation, you can go with or without an attorney. It's not required that you have an attorney, but it is recommended that you have one. Your attorney can help you with these steps so you go into mediation prepared, but more importantly, during the mediation, your attorney can advise you on your rights. The mediator can't do that because they're neutral between both parties. So I do recommend that you take an attorney with you to mediation. Other than that, I have seven steps to help you with the mediation process. Tip number one is be prepared. So know all of your finances, have recent statements from all of your accounts, both assets and debts, um, and work with your attorney in advance to make sure that you and the other side have exchanged all the necessary information and documents. If both sides go into mediation knowing what the other side has and what's on the table to be discussed, that's going to make the mediation more efficient, which since you're paying the mediator by the hour is an additional bonus to the opportunity to settle your case. Tip number two. Know what you want, but also be prepared to compromise. You should look at all the aspects of your case with your attorney. Your attorney can help you identify every single issue that's gonna be addressed at mediation and identify what your top priorities are. So you know that those are what you wanna focus on when you go into the mediation. You could also look at what your spouse might or might not want. So you know things that you could give them in exchange for something that you want. And you also wanna identify the areas in which you're most willing to compromise so you know where you can most easily make concessions during mediation. Your attorney will help you put together a first offer to get the mediation started out with an offer on the table that can be taken to the other side so you guys can move the negotiations along quickly. If you go in with that offer prepared, again, that's gonna make the mediation go more quickly and so you'll spend fewer hours paying the mediator's hourly rate, but it also increases the chances that you're going to settle that day. However, you just have to be aware that you're not gonna get everything that's in that first offer. So at the end of the day, you should have reached an agreement if you succeed and reach an agreement in the mediation, but it's an agreement that you both can live with. Neither of you are thrilled with, but you've both given some and gotten some. Tip number three, take a break. Mediation is a stressful day and it's usually a long day as well. So it can be very emotionally draining and you wanna make sure that you're staying in a good headspace for all the important issues that you're discussing and trying to reach an agreement on. So if you need a break, uh, your attorney and the mediator are not mind readers. If you need a drink or just to go outside and get a breath of fresh air or go to the bathroom, speak up, let them know, just ask for a short break and you guys can regroup after that break. The other thing to know is that mediation naturally has a lot of breaks built in. So there's gonna be a fair amount of time when the mediator is in the room, an actual room or a Zoom room with the other side, the other attorney and your spouse and you and your attorney will be left alone in your own virtual or real room. Uh, you should use that time to decompress. You can think about what's happened in the mediation, definitely your attorney will address any questions that you have at that point, but try to avoid using that time to sneak in work emails or check out social media, just anything that's gonna stress you out or make you tense, you know, listen to some music, read a good book, but use that time to get the mental downtime that you need to make it through the whole day of mediation. Tip number four is to be honest about your finances. Yes, it's scary and feels invasive to lay all your financial information out on the table for the other side to see, but being honest is the best way to reach a settlement in mediation or any other time during the case. And also, if you aren't honest and you conceal some of your financial situation, uh, that could lead to overturning an agreement that you reached in mediation based on the fact that you didn't disclose that information to your spouse. So again, your attorney can help you to gather all the relevant information. Uh, you might not realize it's relevant to the divorce, uh, but your attorney will help you make sure that all the information is out on the table in exchange with the other side and that you have the same information for the other side as well. Tip number five, Avoid insults and verbal attacks. Uh, the old saying, you win more flies with honey, is true, especially in mediation. There's a reason you're getting divorced. Obviously, things are not perfect between you and your spouse, but mediation is not really the time to hash out old hurts and try and make them pay emotionally for what they've done or the point where the marriage has gotten at this point. So go in, focus on your goals, Yes, this is a person you don't 100% like, but you still need to reach a compromise with them in order 
to get your divorce completed. So focus on that aspect of the day. If you absolutely cannot tolerate being in the same room as your spouse, that's something that you'll want to let your attorney know in advance. Most mediators start the mediation process with both parties and both attorneys in the same room, and they might separate into different rooms later in the process. If starting the process initially in the same room as your spouse is just going to lead to conflict, that's something that can be avoided and your attorney can ask the mediator to start in separate rooms instead of the traditional method of starting together. Tip number six, explain your reasons for why you want certain results in the divorce. Um, explaining your reasons can help your spouse understand where you're coming from and might make them more willing to compromise and concede on a certain issue if they understand why you want it and not just the fact that you do want it. It also allows for more creative problem solving. So if everyone, the mediator, your spouse, both attorneys, know why it is that you want a certain result, they can work to think of creative problem solving and solutions that will allow you to achieve or at least partially achieve that goal and still allow you to reach an agreement and a settlement in mediation. Tip number seven is to listen. Should be obvious because it's pretty much the flip side of tip number six. Um, but you wanna listen to everyone in the mediation, but particularly to your spouse. And you wanna listen not just so that you can respond and wait till they're done, but to actually understand where they're coming from. If your spouse feels heard and understood by you, they are gonna be more willing to compromise with you. Sometimes people just need that acknowledgement and emotional validation more than they need the substantive result that they're seeking in mediation. On the flip side of that, if you actually understand where your spouse is coming from, you're gonna be more open-minded and willing to uh, maybe consider creative solutions or other aspects of the case that you just hadn't thought about before. And being open-minded is gonna help you compromise, which if, you're both, if both parties are working to compromise, you are much more likely to actually reach an agreement in mediation. If you're thinking about resolving your divorce case through mediation, or if you already have mediation scheduled, contact Porchlight for help with your mediation process. We love resolving cases through mediation and helping couples avoid court.